Exotic weapons have always been some of the most powerful weapons throughout Destiny's history. Exotic catalysts take them a step up. If an exotic has a catalyst available, you definitely want to unlock it. That being said, specific catalysts only drop from certain activities. So which ones drop from where? I'm Marshix, and in this video I'll go over how to get every exotic catalyst. There are a lot of catalysts to go over, so I'm going to go kind of fast so I don't waste everyone's time. I will leave timestamps in the description, and while I'm down there, I'll link my video to farming kills to upgrade catalysts very quickly. These are all in the same order as the collections tab. First off, we have Sweet Business. Its catalyst drops after completing strikes or crucible matches. It greatly reduces flinch from incoming damage while the weapon is fully spun up. The Sturm Catalyst drops randomly from any kills on Nessus. Once upgraded, it gets a plus 20 to range and a plus 40 to handling. The Vigilance Wing Catalyst drops from Crucible, specifically wins in the Crucible, and it grants full auto when you hold the trigger. The Catalyst for Rat King drops at the end of strikes. It improves aim assist and recoil direction, as well as triggers health regen when Vermin Invisibility is active. The Mita Multi-Tool Catalyst drops from Crucible wins in the survival playlist after reaching Legend Rank, aka 5500 Glory. Once equipped, it gives Mida Outlaw. The Crimson Catalyst is one of the easiest and most common ones. You get it by simply killing any enemy, and it has a very low chance to drop. The upgraded Catalyst gives it a plus 20 to range. The Jade Rabbit Catalyst drops after wins in the Crucible, and after upgrading it, gives the Jade Rabbit a plus 20 to stability. The Huckleberry Catalyst drops at the end of Heroic Adventures, and upgrading it will allow kills to reload the entire magazine instead of just a portion of it. The Soros Regime Catalyst comes from wins in the Crucible, and it increases the chance for kills to trigger the health regen. The Cerberus Catalyst is a unique one that allows you to hold reload to swap modes to a tighter and more closer range spread. This can be found at the end of Strikes. Ace of Spades can drop from either Strikes or Crucible, and once it's fully upgraded, Firefly deals more damage while Memento Mori is active. The Izanagi's Burden Catalyst is a guaranteed drop from Heroic Menagerie after masterworking your Chalice. It makes it so that your Honed Edge times 4 shots deal more damage, 9 times that of a normal shot. The Upbreak Perfected Catalyst drops from the Heroic Zero Hour quest, and is upgraded by doing the Zero Hour puzzle with all the codes in the room before the boss. It may be annoying to get upgraded, but it makes up for it by increasing the damage of the Siva Nanites, and causes enemies killed by the Nanites to spawn more of them. The Bad Juju Catalyst is obtained from the Tribute Hall after collecting and placing 45 tributes. The upgraded catalyst extends the duration of the String of Curses perk. The Lumina catalyst drops from either Strikes or Crucible and makes it so that you can get two remnants per final blow instead of just one. The last kinetic weapon we have is the Wither Horde. Its catalyst is obtained through a quest from Banshee. Once upgraded, it increases the handling of the gun and gives it auto-loading holster. On to the energy weapons. We have 19 that have catalysts. The first one is Cold Heart. Its catalyst comes from strike completions, and it gives plus 20 to reload speed and plus 20 to stability. Next up is the Fighting Lion. Its catalyst has a low chance to drop from any PvE kill, and it boosts the handling and accuracy of your other weapons after you fire this weapon. The Sunshot Catalyst can drop from either Strikes or Crucible, and it gives it a plus 30 to range and a plus 20 to stability. Graviton Lance, just like the Sunshot, has its catalyst drop from Strikes and Crucible, and after upgrading it, it gets plus 20 to range, plus 15 to aim assist, and it increases target acquisition. Skyburner's Oath is going to require you to go into the original Leviathan raid. This can drop from any encounter from either the normal mode or the prestige mode, and it gives the weapon a straight up plus 30 to range. The Hard Light Catalyst drops from Strikes. It gives a plus 20 to stability, which makes it a laser. Although it's not nearly as powerful as it once was, it's definitely still worth picking up if you don't have it. The Merciless Catalyst comes from Strikes, and it makes Merciless really powerful in Crucible by giving it a plus 40 to range and another plus 40 to stability. It's been a while since I used this in Crucible, but for a long time this was very powerful and extremely overlooked. The Borealis Catalyst is one that drops from any PvE enemy. Once unlocked it will give a plus 20 to reload speed. The Prometheus Lens Catalyst drops from Strikes, and it gives it a plus 20 to stability and plus 20 to handling. The Telesto Catalyst requires you to go into the Eater of Worlds raid on Prestige, and this will drop from any encounter. 
This can be done solo if you don't have a team, and I'll link a video on how to do it in the description. Once upgraded, it increases the magazine size to 7 up from 4, and you'll be able to carry a little bit more ammo in your total reserves. Polaris Lance's Catalyst gives it Dragonfly, and is obtained through the nascent Dawn Quest from Anna Bray on Mars. The Trinity Ghoul Catalyst is brand new this season, and can be obtained from Strikes. It allows the Lightning Rod perk to trigger from final blows from any arc source, not just headshots. The Lord of Wolves Catalyst increases reload speed while Release the Wolves is active, and increases stability when it's not. This can be attained from the end of Strikes, Crucible, or even Gambit matches. For Ariana's Val, you'll have to complete a quest from Banshee that requires a lot of activity completions. It's a real grind to get it, but once you do, it gets an increased magazine size from 6 to 9, and it also gets auto-loading holster. The Symmetry Catalyst also comes from a quest from Banshee. Its upgrade increases the maximum number of dynamic charge stacks you can have. Tommy's Matchbook once again comes from a quest from Banshee, but this time its catalyst increases your health regen while Ignition Trigger is active. Keep in mind it only regens your health, not your shields. The Fourth Horseman Catalyst, as far as I'm aware, is not available at this time. Last season it dropped from the Seraph Towers, Legendary Lost Sectors, and Clearing Bunkers, but none of that is in the game right now. If I'm wrong and there is a way to get it, let me know in the comments. If you're still curious what its catalyst does, it adds an extra round to the magazine and increases reload speed. The final energy weapon we have is the Ruinous Evigy. This is obtained from any melee kill with the transmutation sphere that it generates. To upgrade it quickly, you'll need to shoot a lot of the Savathun eyes on all the planets. Once unlocked, this weapon deals increased damage against targets damaged by the transmutation spheres. Moving on to our heavy weapons, let's start off with the Prospector. Its catalyst can be obtained from strikes, and it gives plus 40 to blast radius and increases ammo reserves. The Tractor Cannon Catalyst is one of the ones that has a chance to drop from any enemy in PvE. This increases its ammo reserves and magazine size. The Legend of Acrius of course drops from the original Leviathan Raid, but specifically on the Prestige version, and it can come from any encounter. The upgraded catalyst gives it increased reserves and allows you to hold up to 6 shots in the magazine instead of 2. Next up is Darcy. Its catalyst drops from any PvE enemy, and once completed it gives it plus 20 stability. Wardcliff Coil's catalyst drops from strikes, and it improves the tracking of all the rockets. The Colony catalyst drops after winning crucible matches. Upgrading it gives it increased ammo reserves and increased magazine size. Worldline Zero drops from any PvE kill, specifically with a sword. This will reduce the time it takes while sprinting to activate the Tesseract perk. The Sleeper Simulant Catalyst is obtained from any encounter or chest in the Prestige Spire of Stars raid. This is one of my least favorites to upgrade because it requires you to get a lot of kills with the Ikelos weapons, do the Whisper puzzle, and also get a lot of kills with it. Once you do all of that though, it has a shorter charge time and increased ammo reserves. Whisper the Worm has one of the best catalysts. It gives it a perk called Whispered Breathing, which grants increased damage after aiming down sights for a short time. This is obtained after completing the Heroic Whisper mission on IO, and upgraded by doing the puzzle in the Whisper mission. The very last exotic we have is the Black Talon. Its catalyst drops from any PvE kill, and gives it increased damage for Crow's Wings after blocking damage. Well everyone, that's it. Did I miss anything? If I did, let me know in the comments so I can correct it. What's your favorite catalyst? I'm really interested to hear which ones are the most popular. I hope you all found this video helpful, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I'm Marshix, and I'll see you next time.